Slavery in America is an undeniable fact that has influenced the lives of all Americans one way or another. From the shores of Europe to the shores of West Africa to the shores of many countries along the route, you can find the remnants of the scourge of humanity. And in spite of the massive abuse and waste of life, some manage to rise above their circumstances and thrive. Psalm 35 says, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. To an uninitiated set of eyes, it might not seem like a major change to go from the belly of a ship to wrinkled shacks thrown together by merchants of human beings, but it was. It was this environment where the hope that never left those who were uprooted from their homes and dislodged from their families came alive. It speaks to the endurance of the human spirit that is determined to survive. And none were more determined than this man, Charles Syfax, the patriarch of a family who traces its beginnings to the home of the father of the nation, George Washington. Slavery was not an uncommon circumstance of life for George and Martha Washington. In fact, the combining of their fortunes and marriage made them one of the wealthiest families in all of Virginia, and slaves were at the center of their business. It also set the stage for a remarkable story of a family that endured the dehumanizing condition of slavery. At the dinner table, my mother would talk to my brother and I and tell us about what was going on at George Washington's plantation in Mount Vernon. He told us, uh, she told us that Charles Syfax was an original slave of George Washington and that he married Mariah Custis, who was at Arlington House. I'm glad to know that I have knowledge of my genealogy. And I'm also glad to know that Charles Syfax was a prominent, decent, uprising young man in his time, and that he married somebody who was just the same. And he carried, and the Syfaxes today are carrying on the tradition that he and Mariah started. 